let's get into uh, the rest of the morning and the technology. And for an overview of the ArcGIS platform, I'd like to introduce Director of Software Development, Sud Menon. Hey, Sud. Thanks, Take it Jim. away. All right. Good morning. Welcome to the Developer Summit. My goal this morning is to give you an overview of the ArcGIS platform and the updates that we've been making so that you are level set for the rest of the plenary and the week ahead as you explore all the developer options available to you. So the science of where is advancing, integrating and leveraging many in innovations, and so is ArcGIS, right? Innovations in the world of data, in the world of computing, and of course, things that we are continuously developing in GIS and integrating uh, into, into the platform. ArcGIS enables a whole new scale of GIS and mapping for teams, departments, organizations, and of course, individuals. It enables location intelligence everywhere. ArcGIS is available as both a SaaS mapping and location platform as well as a comprehensive GIS. I'm going to walk through these uh, aspects of ArcGIS. ArcGIS Online is a worldwide mapping and location platform. It's used by people all over the world. And mapping, as you know, is at the heart of ArcGIS Online. ArcGIS Online mapping allows you to create compelling user experiences that are interactive, immersive, and analytic. It includes smart mapping for data-driven visualization, and it works with your data fully hosted, updatable whenever you need to update it. And it has rich base maps, imagery, demographic data, and of course, geocoding, routing, geo-enrichment. So it's a comprehensive and you know, available mapping platform. This mapping is really designed to work with your data and bring it to life. So smart mapping is available in both 2D and 3D. Uh, we have things like clustering that are available of the categorizations that you've applied to your data. You can map temporal patterns. And for 3D, uh, we have styles that really bring your data to life in scenes. This mapping platform includes an interactive map viewer and map maker that lets you create web maps and web scenes that you can share and that are also what power applications. Because these maps and scenes, they're actually documents that are saved in the platform. They're declarative specifications of the visualizations that you need, and they can come to life in applications. It also includes easily configurable story maps and dashboard apps, as well as a JavaScript API that's built for the modern web. It's performant. It's responsive. It's made for mobile devices. All of that smart mapping that I talked about, it's available to applications via this API. Uh, high performance WebGL on features, on vector tiles, on 3D data in scenes. Uh, there's widgets and tools, as well as interactive analytics client side. You're going to see all of this this morning. And these are some of the the things behind the scenes that we're also really very interested in about you know, as far as mapping goes. It includes dynamic feature tiles that combine the best of vector tiles and updatable data. Uh, these are generated and cached on the fly and automatically discarded when the data changes. Feature layer views that allow, allow you to easily create and independently share different slices of your data with different groups and then index scene layers and scene layer packages, a community specification for managing massive 3D visualization caches with support for 3D objects, integrated reality meshes, point clouds, and a growing list of partners and content suppliers. The next key capability of ArcGIS Online is field mobility. Uh, this is for the workers, mobile workers uh, collecting data in the field and for the coordinators uh, in the office who are helping them do that work. It includes a full suite of apps for collecting data with support for high-precision GPS, uh, form-centric experiences for collecting data, 
advanced navigation that works offline and that can take people uh, to where they need to go using routes that are computed in the back office, uh, multi-vehicle routes, um, you know, visiting multiple stops, all of that's available through Navigator. And the ability to take maps out into the field and, and mark them up together with the back office apps for coordinating this work. The third capability of ArcGIS Online as a mapping and location platform is location analytics. And here we have insights for exploratory data analysis and visualization. It's got a visual, intuitive, and responsive experience. It's charts and maps. And it's for people who may not have used maps before, but they're familiar with charts, with business intelligence, and they're able to use it very effectively uh, to explore and analyze their data. ArcGIS Online also includes map-centric spatial analysis, a rich and growing set of functions that works with layers to create new layers and that lets you do a wide range of analyses. So those are the three key capabilities of ArcGIS Online as a mapping and location platform, mapping, field mobility, and location analytics. But ArcGIS Online also includes app builders that allow you to easily create applications. The Web App Builder, which is extremely popular, as well as App Studio, that lets you create mobile apps once, build once, deploy on any device, right? These are native applications. I talked about the JavaScript API, but ArcGIS Online also includes the runtime APIs for building native apps on iOS, Android, and these are also part of the platform. OK, it's great. You guys might be thinking, I've been going on and on about ArcGIS Online. Uh, what about these capabilities in the rest of the platform? Well, the thing to know is that ArcGIS Enterprise includes all of these capabilities and additional capabilities for data management, for imagery, for real time. In general, GIS includes all aspects of mapping and location. And like I said, ArcGIS is really available in these two forms, as a SaaS mapping and location platform and as GIS. And each one of these capabilities comes with experiences with apps and APIs. Moving on to ArcGIS Enterprise, it's comprehensive GIS in your own infrastructure. It includes enterprise data management, analysis, and mapping. Uh, at 10.6, it's improved in many ways. Uh, it includes, for example, content replication uh, between portals uh, that enables distributed collaboration. It's available to deploy in your own infrastructure and also in the cloud. And it includes uh, the ArcGIS Enterprise Builder, for a simple one-step install of all aspects of it, as well as Chef uh, for automation, multi-machine you know, multi deployments of, of ArcGIS Enterprise. ArcGIS Pro is a complete modern GIS workstation, as well as an excellent companion to online and enterprise. ArcMap is going to continue to be supported for long, to, uh, for long time to come, but our innovation and our work in desktop GIS are going into ArcGIS Pro. The most recent release in January, 2.1, has a whole host of new capabilities, including support for the new utility network, the new image analyst extension, as well as interactive 3D tools for analysis, and lots more that you'll see. So a very active. Uh, being widely used and adopted, and a key aspect, a third, the key third aspect of our platform in terms of online, pro, and enterprise. I'm next going to talk about capabilities that ArcGIS Enterprise and Pro bring to the table in addition to mapping, field mobility, and location analytics. And the first of these, of course, is data management and compilation. Uh, the new utility network is a key aspect of this, you know, advancing the information model in areas like multi-tier networks, sub-networks, 
connectivity and containment associations. So it's really the next generation of our offering uh, for modeling utility networks. Uh, it also has improved transactions based on an underlying branch versioning model. And when I say improved transactions, uh, not the model, but in terms of performance and scalability. Another area that we've been doing lots of work in is CAD and BIM integration. And our goal here really is to make a strong connection uh, between the world of, of CAD and BIM and the world of, of GIS. And this includes adding support, for example, for Revit as a data source in ArcGIS Pro. And this really allows these two communities, you know, of construction and planning to work very tightly together. Uh, also, lots of work going into editing, uh, including stereo and feature extraction. I'll talk about the new stereo analyst in a bit, as well as improved geocoding uh, based on a whole new geocoding engine. In the area of 3D GIS, I talked about visualization, but our goal here really is a complete system of record and, in, and engagement. The world is moving to 3D. Our people want to manage that 3D information. I talked about the I3S layers and how we work with these various representations of data in 3D, but there's also a lot of work going on in, in analysis, as well as a, a, another tier of applications built on this 3D foundation uh, for planning and geodesign. There's also innovative work uh, being done in AR and VR. You're going to see some of that uh, this morning, and apps that we build uh, on 3D, like our GIS Earth. Moving on to analytics. ArcGIS Pro is a complete analytics workstation, right? It has Model Builder and ArcPy and a comprehensive set of tools, starting with tabular and vector geoprocessing and extending all the way to geostatistics and spatial statistics and pattern mining. Uh, these tools work in desktop, in Pro, and they also power our services. For example, in the case of Network Analyst, the routing services and the logistics services uh, that run in ArcGIS Online. It's all the same code, and it's all the same functional capabilities, and we're able to leverage it uh, in Pro, in the runtime, and in our services-based uh, models. I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, our work in the area of machine learning and spatial data science. Geospatial data provides rich contextual information for observations and events. By events, we mean things like equipment failures, crimes, accidents, by contextual information, we mean things like distance to school, soil moisture, the underlying uh, you know, soil type, and so forth. That all of this information can really help the process of trying to apply machine learning algorithms to predict, to understand. Right? These, are, these are explanatory input variables, potentially explanatory, that can be added. And GIS, through the power of geolocation and geoenrichment, can really augment these data sets and, and feed machine learning. You know, classification, clustering, pattern mining, prediction, these are some of the machine learning tools that are in ArcGIS. In addition, ArcGIS integrates with external machine learning frameworks. The tools in ArcGIS are aware of spatial autocorrelation and spatial dependencies, and they really help inform these tools in terms of clustering, in terms of classification, in terms of prediction. But uh, there's also a lot of innovation going on in the world of machine learning and deep learning, like you know, and ArcGIS integrates beautifully uh, with those frameworks. In the area of big data spatial analysis, we have the geoanalytics server, as well as the image server are doing raster analytics. The geoanalytics server really works with large observation collections. It does geometric and tabular processing, does geocoding. Uh, we're working on adding the ability to do geoenrichment of these observations against your own data in this big data framework. And of course, it does spatial pattern mining with things like density and hotspots and space-time uh, cube generation. Raster Analytics is incredibly powerful in two areas. It's part of our image server product, but it really does two things. The first is distributed image processing, right? And by image processing, we mean things like classification, segmentation, and so forth. But it also does distributed raster spatial analytics over massive raster GIS datasets. 
including all of the functions that you've been able to do uh, in Raster.js and that are really important, right? Like local functions, focal functions, zonal functions, things like distance analysis, the hydrology tools. Uh, in the latest release in 10.6, uh, these have also been parallelized and distributed, the distance functions and the hydro tools. And we are now able to solve flow, pro flow problems on very large data sets using commodity clusters, uh, problems the size, at sizes that would you know, have taken supercomputers, and people do solve those on supercomputers. Super but uh, this allows uh, those problems to be solved on, on commodity clusters. The ArcGIS API for Python is empowering GIS users, and it's attracting data scientists to ArcGIS. It really allows you to drive the analytics and the visualization capabilities of the platform through Python. And it runs in Jupyter Notebooks, making it really attractive uh, to, a, to a wide range of people. And it's also one of the ways to easily interface our server-based technologies with machine learning frameworks. ArcGIS is also a complete imagery platform. It includes an advanced imagery workstation, as well as an image server that does both dynamic image processing as well as the distributed image processing that I described. And that advanced imagery workstation is pro with the new image analyst extension. And that allows you to do ortho mapping. It allows you to do stereo uh, image space mensuration, as well as full motion video coming uh, this summer. We're also doing work in the area of imagery and, and deep learning. Uh, the goal here is to enable image analysts to use Pro and their existing vector data to easily create training samples that can be directly used in popular deep learning frameworks like CNTK and TensorFlow. Esri staff are also participating in the community of image scientists engaged in the use of deep learning for classification as well as object detection problems. What we want to do from a productization perspective in the software is to make it really easy for image analysts to use these trained deep learning models as classifiers and object detectors in both ArcGIS Pro and ArcGIS Image Server via new out-of-the-box integrations uh, of, of, of new classification and object detection raster functions that directly work with these deep learning engines. So you can bring in these trained models and you or others can directly use them. Real-time analytics is a key capability for working with the IoT and sensor networks. Right? The combination of the geo event server and the geo analytics server lets you do real-time analytics as well as recurrent batch analytics on the accumulated observations. So that is the core ArcGIS platform. And on that platform, we have new solutions being built. And one of these, a core solution, is the ArcGIS Hub for community engagement. It allows governments and cities to engage with their citizens and brings real value to, this, to, the, to citizens uh, through that engagement. And there's lots of opportunities uh, for developers in this space. And we have the ArcGIS developer platform, which has the complete suite of SDKs and APIs for allowing you to work with all of these capabilities that I described. And you're going to see a lot of that this morning. And this conference is all about this. Our goal with the developer platform is to support developers targeting enterprises and industries. Mm -hmm.